Statistics and Excel, mean and outliers. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with statistics and Excel. I mean, we'll be using OneNote here, but we'll still talk about Excel. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon on the left-hand side, OneNote presentations, 14, 16, mean and outlier tab. We're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so that you can go to the view tab, use the immersive reader tool, changing the language if you so choose, being able to read or listen to the transcript in multiple languages, tying the transcripts into the video presentation using the timestamps. OneNote desktop version here, data on the left hand side, our salary data that we are imagining for a corporation, for example, we're going to do some of our standard calculations on the data set, such as the mean or the average, the median, the max, the min, quartile one, quartile three, and then we're going to add an outlier, in this case, imagining that to be the CEO salary, which is far higher than any other salary and then look at what changes with those standard calculations and what implications those changes may have when we're making decisions in the future in terms of what types of numbers do we want to be using to represent our data set for relevant de decision making. All right, so if we look at our data set on the left-hand side, this is our salary data set. We're gonna be doing the average calculation. These are just our formulas for the average calculations that we've seen in prior presentations. Here's gonna be our uh, numbers that we would be calculating. We've got the mean or the average, which we could calculate using our formulas up here, which means we would basically add up our data set and divide by the number of uh, items within the data set. If using Excel, we can use this trusty average function, which would simply be equals average uh, in order to calculate it. Scroll out here a little bit so we can see this at one time. Then we're going to have the median. Remember, that's the one that we're going to pick the one in the middle. So if we sort it from lowest to highest, simply picking the one in the middle is the median. And if we have Excel, Excel can do that for us. Obviously, we, not, we need to know what the difference is between a mean calculation and a median calculation. And we'll see here that, of course, there are times when one will be more relevant than another, and we have to pick the more relevant one. In this case, you can see that there two are fairly close to each other, and that would give us an indication in and of itself that there isn't a huge outlier, possibly, that's really skewing the mean. If these two are very different from each other, that might give us an indication that that there could be an outlier impact. And if there is, then we probably want to dig down deeper and see what's going on with it. So then we have the maximum. This is the largest number in the data set. We can get that by just using the function equals max to pick that up. And then we have the min. That's going to be the lowest number in the data set, which we can see right here is the 67.9. The highest number, if I go down 84,000, was the 84,000 here. We can get to the min, which simply equals min calculation. And then we've got quartile one, which now we're taking like the middle point of that first quartile. We're, bre we're basically breaking the data set, taking it from top to bottom, right? And then breaking it up, not just in the middle point, but by quartiles. And you can use in Excel uh, the quartile.exc. You have to use one more argument, a comma one, to get the quartile one to calculate. And then we have quartile three because we already have quartile two in the median. And here's the calculation for that quartile three. You just need a three at the end of it to be picking it up. Now, if we were to do the average calculation using our formula, we can sum up the entire, uh, all of our cells, which would be quite tedious to do in a calculator. But in Excel, we can recalculate this number, the average 71,498 by summing everything up, which is our, our most trusty function in Excel, the sum function. And then we are gonna divide that by the number of values, meaning we can count the number of values. Now to not do that manually, we can use a count function in Excel equals count all of all the cells in this table. It comes out to 51. And if we divide that out, then we get to our average. Let's see 
if I pull out the trusty calculator just to check 